I think the majority of us become passionate about something when we experience it firsthand. And that's definitely the case with hospice palliative care. Certainly the case with me um, as I journeyed with my parents in their end of life. My dad died in one of the palliative care rooms in the Olds Hospital 14 years ago. And my mom passed away six years later in the Red Deer Hospice. It was my mom's experience at the hospice and her, pre her previous experience to that as a hospice palliative care volunteer with Red Deer Family Service Bureau that sort of awakened a passion in me as I witnessed the things my mom did in her life and in her end of life. After my mom died, I thought how much better it would have been for my dad if he had had a hospice here in Olds, and I still believe that. Lately, I, I've also realized how profoundly I've been touched by people I've known in their end-of-life journey since my parents passed away, and I learned from every one of them. The thing all palliative stories have in common is that we all die, and although each one is unique and has um, special gifts interwoven in it, um, there are similarities as well. If I had to grade the quality of each of the end-of-life experiences I've been privileged to witness and journey with, I would still have to say my mom's was the best. Partly because of the hospice and partly because of education and awareness. My mom knew what an end-of-life journey was and she knew they were unique but that there were similarities woven into each experience. She had been a homemaker and palliative care volunteer for Red Deer Family Service Bureau and journeyed with a lot of rural uh, families in central Alberta. She knew how the various supports established in our community and in our systems work. She knew how to access them and when. She knew how important they were to um, end of life for families who sometimes don't even know what they don't know. When my dad was diagnosed, my parents moved to Oles for his last year of life. And my mom, again, knew when to tap into home care, uh, aides to family living, palliative care resource nurse, um, pharmacists. She knew where the information was, she knew when they needed it, and she knew how to get it. It was exhausting, but she was the go-to person. She knew how to do it. When it came time for my dad to go to the palliative room in the Olds Hospice Hospital, because my dad knew he didn't want to die at home, but he did want to journey there as long as he could. So by the time it was time for my dad to go to that palliative room in the hospital, it was uh, my mom's decision again, a hard one, but her decision again that now is the time, knowing that uh, his days were coming to an end. And uh, she still remained his major caregiver, even in the hospital. And I think she knew going in that she would still be the one who did a lot of his care. Um, and she did. She did it with a great deal of courage and dignity. My mom was the bridge that guided my sister and I and our families through my dad's end-of-life journey. Years later, when my mom's time was drawing near, it was she again who made the call to go to hospice. The hardest part for us in investigating the os option of hospice for my mother was knowing what it meant for her to go there. This is a place where people die. We soon realized that it's actually a place where people live with a great deal of respect and dignity and comfort and peace. The hospice was a gift. It was a place where all those questions and fears and ponderings about dying could be brought out into the light and examined. And, and you were safe to do that there. All of us were. The hospice had a palliative physician who came to visit my mom the day after she moved into her room and uh, he treated her with a great deal of kindness of course and respect and he did not bat an eye when my mom started peppering him with questions about what end of life was going to be, what death looked like, what she could expect as far as he knew and he answered her straight and honestly and kindly and once my mom had all those questions about what actually dying looks like. She stopped fretting about dying and she got on with living. The physical aspects of the hospice were were beautiful. They were comfortable and cozy. Her room was lovely. She filled it with pictures and uh, music. 
her uh, and family and friends. The hospice desk uh, always had a, a policy where they would um, have residents. If someone came to visit a resident, the hospice desk would say, you have a visitor, are you okay for them? And they wanted to know if mom wanted to be have any of her visitors screened. And uh, she said, yes, she did. After my mom died, she was five weeks in the hospice. After she died, the staff kind of smiled because they said she never refused one visitor, not one. She, <laughs> she welcomed every visitor into, into her room and sometimes she was waiting in the door for them. So uh, it was definitely a place that, uh, that celebrated her life, her friendships and her family. There was a little playroom in the hospice where our 10-year-old son could go play and, and then still run back periodically and check on grandma. And uh, there was private, lovely, comfortable areas, sitting areas and rooms where the family could go to talk if mom got tired in her own room. There was space and all of it was peaceful. One of our daughters remembers uh, going to the hospice and how peaceful and respectful it was. And moreover, she remembers uh, there was no fear about dying there. So just as we're influenced by witnessing a life lived well, we can equally learn from a good death. In her last weeks at the hospice, my mom was able to prepare herself to say goodbye. She, um, she was able to tell her family and friends how much they meant to her. She surrounded herself with photos of her family. She talked about those who died before her. The hospice in Red Deer helped. In fact, it was essential to a beautiful death for my mom and we all benefited from it. So by tapping into good hospice care, my mom gave us the gift of family at the end of her life. The care component that she required uh, came from the staff at the hospice who all knew why, why they were there. They got it. They're called to work there. They're gifted. And we were allowed to just be family. My mom chose hospice because she knew exactly what it was. Do I believe hospice is the best choice for our community? Absolutely. But it equally needs to be supported by education and awareness of the services that are available so that those support systems can cut in before a family is overtired, overwearied, overwrought. And it needs a continuous, supported, trusted presence, like my mom was for my dad and our family, and like the hospice was for my mom and our family. I am still overwhelmed by the courage and generosity of my mom in her end of life journey. Throughout her life, she made it perfectly clear that family was her priority. Good hospice care allowed that priority in her death as well.